Grazie, grazie a Peter Hansman per aver spiegato questo bellissimo film eh, su una figura che anche in Italia è, è, è importantissima. Eh, volevo dire che faremo una cosa particolare, avremo uscita evento a metà novembre e poi in accordo eh, insieme con Andrea Vianello che è quindi direttore di Retre, eh, siamo molto felici di poter dire che questo film andrà eh, in modo inedito quale inedita in televisione il 22 novembre per festeggiare, per festeggiare, per ricordare più che altro i eh, 50 anni della morte di Kennedy, quindi la Rai eh, farà le tre in particolare, farà un grandissimo evento e siamo molto fieri di poter presentare questo film che veramente ci è piaciuto moltissimo, che abbiamo eh, amato e che credo che mh, dà anche degli spunti e delle notizie eh, che, non il, che il grande pubblico non conosce su quello che è successo a Dallas in quei drammatici giorni. E quindi ringrazio di nuovo i produttori, Peter e il cast, è un cast fantastico, eh, grazie e tutti su Rai 3 il 22 novembre. For 50 years, the assassination of Kennedy had been understood from the level of speculation and mythology and politics and idea and conspiracy <clears throat> and something unknown happening in the ether that may have coalesced to kill him. What we never really thought about was the disorientation and the power and the, uh, and the chaos and the anarchy of what it was to experience and survive the assassination and that entire weekend. That was the initial concept. You know, I thought about 9-11, I was in New York, I was very close to the towers when they came down, and I was a journalist before, I was a filmmaker, uh, and covered wars and war zones, and was always compelled by stories about surviving the impossible, surviving fear, surviving disorientation, and surviving panic. So I thought about this prism and looking at the assassination through this prism, it had never been done before. You know, filmically, in books, this assassination had been thought of purely from the 30,000 foot level. And in terms of just pure information, the, the, the idea of plot and story, there's really not a scene in this movie that anybody's ever seen before. You know, we've been exposed again to the speculation and the mythology, but never really what it was like on the ground, what was happening to you. The concept of the movie was to take an audience and put them in the shoes of these people and have it wash over them like a wave. And I thought that had never, I thought it was, a, it was a dialogue about this very thing that we think we know everything about and we really, frankly, know very little. And I thought it was the, the kind of dialogue we needed. And as the 50th anniversary was approaching, I thought, why not, why not now? And that's sort of the, the idea, the concept of like first responders, people that are actually dealing with a tragedy as it's happening in sort of real time. And I think that, I mean, there's certain events in American history, you think about Lincoln's assassination, you think about Pearl Harbor, you think about Kennedy, you think about 9-11. And it was, I think what was so attractive for, for Guy, myself, and Nigel Sinclair, uh, and exclusive was to kind of get inside kind of the, the, that material, which, you know, you've seen sort of the, the, the story about sort of the, you know, essentially the more important people, the iconic people that you've seen, you know, whether it's Lyndon Johnson, Jackie Kennedy, etc., um, Bobby Kennedy, and this was about sort of, you know, the average people on the ground, and I think that's the hook of the film. If there was one hook, that would be the appeal. I would just add that I was actually in New York as well on 9-11, right next to the Twin Towers, and uh, one of the things that really astonished me and fascinated me was the extraordinary bravery and courage of ordinary people in that situation, that very dangerous situation. A lot of people were in panic and other people were not and were calm and were able to deal with things. And I think when I first read the screenplay, that was one of the elements that really fascinated me, is what is it that ordinary people do in a, in a crisis like that? If, if we'd been there, how would we have behaved? And these characters that Peter describes in the movie are all very brave, they have great dignity, they act with grace, they're very private. And I think it might be worth him telling you a little bit about some of them who he met and actually met them in his research, I go speak. And just talk a little bit about that because it's so fascinating to meet these guys who are kind of in the shadows but at the time were heroes that nobody really knows about. Them. Yeah, Jim Hosty, uh, played by Ron Livingston in the film, was the FBI agent who uh, destroyed the uh, Oswald files at the very end of the film. I spent four days with him just before he died, and his last breath, in his last breath, he wanted to tell the truth. And it's not like Jim Hosty was a secret. Just nobody bothered to ask who the man was. 
He was always there to tell his story. And I find that also true, that the truth is usually found in the shadows, but it's there to be found. Um, you know, we talk to Tom Hanks all the time. You know, when I talk to Tom about... Uh, Tom Oswald's Hanks is the producer of the film. Yeah. Played to Tom and Gary. Um, about Oswald's brother, Tom said, who the hell knew Oswald had a brother? And who the hell knew, I mean, obviously he had a mother, but no one knew he had a mother as narcissistic and crazy as, as her. But these, this is where the truth is. And you know, you want to find the DNA of why he may have pulled the trigger. You know, you look at his mother. Um, you look at his relationship with his brother. You know, this is the, the emotional fabric of, uh, of I think, the kind of honest film that I hope